Yo, what's good, people? Aversile here, back with the ninth video in the series. Yeah, today we're just... It's gonna be pretty... It's gonna be pretty exciting today. So last episode we talked about... Instance.new, was it? I think it was... I think it was instance.new. And that's just a function that lets you... Well, you know how you can do insert object, and you can insert an object into any service you want. And these objects are just all the things you can kind of insert into these services in your Explorer tab. And uh, one of those is part, you know, script. We've used those two objects. And I mean, that's pretty much all I want you to really understand about instance.new and creating new objects from your scripts. All right, recap over. So the reason I want to keep this recap short is because this episode is going to be really special. Today we're going to learn about events. And events are unique features of objects. So let's say a part, for instance. Parts have their own unique events attached to them. So let's say something happens to an object in the game. That's what we call an event. Okay, so that's what kind of the basic idea of what I want you to understand about what an event is for now. We're going to be talking about built-in events in this episode because uh, those are the most basic form of events. And basically, built-in events are events that Roblox have added in for us. And all we need to know is this: the types of events that are attached to each object. Now, today, I kind of want to just introduce the kind of the big first one that everyone kind of learns first when they're learning events, and that's the touched event. And what that means is, well, when this part is touched by another part, we're going to want to be able to know when that happens in our script, and we want to do something about it when this part gets touched. All right, enough talk. Let, you know, let me let me show you here. So let's, oh, that was the wrong object. Let's insert a script. And let's go ahead and define our part. So let's just do local part equals workspace dot part. Now we're going to make a function to basically tell the game what to do when the event occurs. So let's say local function part touched. And the part we're talking about that got touched is this part here, which is workspace.part, which is right here. So when this part gets touched, we want to run whatever's in this block of code. So let's say I want part dot brick color to equal a random brick color. Then you're probably asking, well, just calling this function, you already know, well, this isn't really going to do what I want it to do. How is it supposed to know that I want to only run this when the parts touch? And this is where events come in. Here's how you use an event. So first you list the object that you want to connect. Then you do dot. And now you're going to get a list of stuff. And that's going to include the events attached to that object. And in this case, it's workspace.part. And one of the events attached to that is touched. And touched, this purple lightning bolt, that's, that's an event. So anything, any symbol you hear you see with a purple lightning bolt is a event. And it says fires one of part, touches another part as a result of physical movement. So part dot touched. So the syntax thing is pretty easy. So part is touched. Now what do we want to do when the part's touched? Well, we want to be able to connect this function part touched to when the game says, okay, this part was touched. So we're going to do some special syntax. We're going to do colon connect. And it says connects the given function to the event and returns blah, 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 blah. Don't worry about that. But basically, the point I want you to get is it connects a given function to the event that we're using, which is part.touched. We're going to connect a function into to this as a parameter. Oh, sorry, sorry, as an argument. And our function is part.touched. So I'll go like this, boom. Part dot touched. Or sorry, part touched. Now we're gonna we're not gonna run this yet because I want to get this part off the ground. And the reason I want to get it off the ground is because every time the part is touched, so let's say it's touched by this base plate, it's gonna change color. Right? So that's what it means when it says it's gonna change the color of this part every time it's touched. And we're gonna anchor it since it's gonna be sitting in the air so that it's not touching any other part. 
Then we're going to go ahead and load in. And yes, you can now change stuff in your game when you touch it. So look at this. Let's go. Yes, dude. Just changing the color of this part. Let's go. Congratulations, guys, Like for making it this far. You, you've done... You spent a lot of time learning the code and you finally reached this point where you're starting to see some cool stuff happening. I hope you guys are enjoying the process. So one thing y'all might be wondering is, it's changing the color so fast. How do I make it so that it only changes it? How do we make it so it doesn't run so fast? Because every time it touches, we can see that it changes colors like super fast. And that's because our body model has so many parts that are touching it at the same time. and it's going to be firing this event so fast. So this function is going to be running so many times per second. And that's just, that's not what we want. It doesn't look appealing. So we're going to introduce, I'm going to introduce something to you called the debounce. So I'm going to say local debounce equals false. And I want it so that this code is only going to run if my debounce is equal to false. So let's say if debounce equal to false, then and we're going to copy and paste. So control C, control V. There we go. Then, okay, well, now we're going to set it to true. And the reason I'm going to show you in a second why I want to set it to true immediately after I pass this conditional statement. Then we're going to say, well, what if it's, what if debounce is equal to true? Well, then it's not going to do this statement. So we're going to say else. Well, what do we want to do if debounce is true? Well, we don't want the brick color to change. So let's return. And return is the same thing as in return. This is essentially the same thing as saying return nil. So nil basically just means nothing. It's 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 literally nothing. Um, so just picture like emptiness, nothing. And this is a special data type to represent when there is no value. So when we say return, we're just saying we don't we want to just get out of this function. We don't want to run anything else. Because I'm going to show you why we don't want to run anything else. We don't want to run this task.wait one and then debounce equals true. And I'll, I'll here, let me let me show you here. So or sorry, false. <laughs> um, so let me show you how this works. So we set debounce equal to false, right? If debounce is false, then now we're going to set it to true. Then we're going to change the brick color. Then, well, we skip over this else and return because this is the first iteration of this function. Then we're going to have to wait one. Then debounce is false again, which means the next function call is going to be able to go through the same procedure over and over again. But let's say that you've touched the part with multiple parts. There's just too many function calls. What's going to happen to the excess is it's going to go through. Debounce is going to be true, and it's going to say, well, it's not tr it's not false, so we can't do this code. So I guess we'll have to do else, return. Now, why is the return important? It's because if we don't put else return here, it's just going to skip the conditional statement, and it's just going to wait one, and then debounce is going to be false, and then it's just going to keep spamming. I'll show you. So let's get rid of else return, okay? So let's just do this. And let's go ahead and play. Let's see if it works without this else return. And we'll see that it stops for a second, but then it, it keeps fluctuating. And this is definitely not waiting one second before you can change the color again. And that's because we're not getting out of the function at any point. The calls are still valid. So what's happening is when we go to our script here, the first iteration of a function when we touch the object goes through, but then it gets called again and again because we're hitting it with multiple parts of our body. And it's just going to go past this. It's going to wait one, then it's going to be false, and then it's going to keep spamming. And it's just going to make a mess. The reason we use else return is so that in the case that debounce is true, we're not going to get out of this conditional statement. We, we don't want this any of this stuff to run unless we know for a fact that this stuff ran first. So it has to be the same iteration. 
So anything that isn't the same iteration, we have to say else return, because else return is going to run if we know debounce is true and this code didn't run on that iteration. Because if it did run on this iteration, all this stuff ran, then it wouldn't go to the else because the first condition was met. So it's only going to run this stuff. And then it's going to skip and it's going to run this stuff. We only want one iteration going at a time. So any iteration that we don't need, we're just going to return. It just means we don't want anything to be done. We're just going to return nothing. And we're just going to go to the next thing. And we're just going to wait for that first iteration to wait one and set it to false, then the first thing that first one that gets in is going to be the next iteration. And then when you have to wait one, and everything else is going to be returned. It's basically a way of filtering your filtering out extra calls that we don't need. I hope that made sense. So let's go ahead and play. And you'll see it should wait the proper time now. There we go. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, it, now it's waiting one second properly. So that's another unique way to use return. I uh, hope that made sense. Just get used to using that. Once again, your return is really useful. I know it might be complicated as a beginner to understand how return works, but it's gonna help you out in the long run. Try to get used to it, okay? Now, that's pretty much it, I mean, I only wanted to introduce the idea of an event. Um, once I get into, because we're getting near the end of the beginner series, I'm going to start the intermediate series, and that's going to go for a lot longer, because in between beginner and advanced scripting, there's way a lot. There's a lot uh, in intermediate scripting. And intermediate scripting is going to be where you're going to learn mostly how to build a game, how to make a game. Um, all of the useful stuff. This is just like getting used to the language, really. Uh, but when you, once you get past this, then you're going to really start learning useful stuff to make games. But anyways, let me stop rambling for now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, a little bit of a more ap applicable episode. You know, it's a little more fun. Uh, a little bit shorter, too, of an episode. Um, yeah, I hope it helped. But as always, until the next one, I will catch you guys later. Peace.